Today is the day. The day that I go and see Dom Simpson and Moulin Rouge and I am so excited about it. But I've got my coffee now because I'm dying. I didn't wake up early. I should have done, but I didn't. I slept through my alarm, so great start to the day already. Um, but I'm so excited. I'm genuinely like, I'm so proud of this man and he is brilliant and amazing. And I know that he's on today because he said to me, you know, see you Wednesday. So unless he got really sick overnight, I should be able to see Dom. Uh, I've got some art for him, which I'll show you when I'm on the train, like, you know, on my way. But I'm, I'm so excited. I'm buzzing. I vaguely know about the plot of Moulin Rouge and I know that it's a jukebox and I have heard a few of the songs which do kind of slap so you know I am excited okay but like I can't get over how fucking cool I look right now like I've got a corset on this long like dark coat I look so mysterious it's great um but yeah that's my outfit of the day uh, so I'll see you on the train where I'm going to Moulin Rouge it's so exciting. Genuinely so exciting. By the way, I made a Dom Simpson fan account on Instagram. That's, that's, I'm gonna put it there. But I made a fan account and it was supposed to be a mystery, you know, a mystery to who owned it. Uh, he figured it out like immediately. I was leaving like little clues here and there. I didn't think he'd guess it that quickly, but he did. At least he knows his fans love him though, so it's a bonus, kind of. I'm a little mad about it. Yeah. Just a little bit. Listen, I ain't gonna talk too much on the train, but look at the fan art that I did for Dom. As Christian, I put a little, I mean, I tried to make it look like neon, like a neon sign. I don't think it worked that well, but like, there he is. It's the first time I've done like a sort of bust profile, I didn't do a full body. But I think he's gonna like it. I used the same color palette as his Elder Price one, and I gave him his chest hair because, because, that's that's why because because Dom, and his cute facial hair as well, which is stunning. But yeah, I'm on the train now, so I'll see you in London. I think I'm going to check out the Theatre Cafe pop up location in the Theatre Cafe diner because the theatre cafe closed. I think they got evicted. So awkward, but you know, I'm gonna check it out to see, you know, what's up with it. So yeah, I will see you when I see you. In London, hopefully. <laughs> By the way, kind of sad update on those play balls that I was getting. Uh, so they didn't arrive, they got lost in the mail. Uh, that was the Gutenberg and the Back to the Future ones. So I messaged the person that sold them to me. She has a spare Gutenberg one, but not a spare Back to the Future one, which sucks. Because I'll probably just have to get it from somewhere else uh, for a similar price, I guess. I'm not paying more for it. Um, so I've settled with a Cover from Away one to replace the Back to the Future one, but I'm still really gutted. So, you know. Okay, so I made it to London. Here's a clip of me rolling in on the Southwestern Railway. We made it to Waterloo. I was so, so happy. So, my first stop was obviously Piccadilly Circus, where the Piccadilly Theatre is. Uh, I wanted to check out Book of Mormon when they had a matinee. I was going to see who's about. Look at me being quirky. I was trying to do Tube Girl. Speaking of the underground and the tube in general, I never, never expected to see a Hades Town poster in a British tube. So it's really exciting that it's coming to the UK, but I really, really want to see Stranger Things first. Yes, first. Okay. So I came out of Piccadilly and immediately saw the Book of Mormon, obviously, and I was thrilled. But, you know, that's not where I was going. So I headed over to the Theatre Cafe Diner where they had the Theatre Cafe pop-up, which was really fun and exciting and interesting. You know, it looked like the diner in there, but they had a sign saying that, like the cafe, you yourself could perform songs. I, I wasn't going to. The menu, however, was kind of like a mix of both places, although I think it was the diner lunch menu. 
I guess they have a lunch and a dinner menu. And I also found a Newsies poster, because, like, what the hell? That's so cool. Um, I added to my piece of Dom art by adding a little message to him and started my day off with a cocktail, a little purple rain. It's one of my favourite cocktails, don't judge me. It's absolutely fantastic. Okay, so the vibes in here were immaculate, as always. A little bit less stressful when it's a bit more quiet. Um, I'm gonna sort of... Be quiet now while you can read this very sweet message that I wrote to Dom on the back of his fan art because he deserves the world and I love him. Um, yeah, it was really sweet. Uh, for lunch I had a quesadilla with chicken, it was really really good. And to finish it off I had a coffee. It's kind of like my dessert, I, I do that a lot for some reason. Cutting out on my little like voiceover bit for a second. This is like the only like cafe place where I can like not stick my headphones in to get the right ambience. It's perfect. Until this moment when I walked underneath the theatre here, I didn't realise Peter Pan Goes Wrong was coming to London for Christmas, but oh well. Uh, I found the Piccadilly Theatre stage door first, just so I knew where it was. This theatre is gorgeous, like I absolutely love it. But yeah, this was my seat, I was in the Grand Circle A27. Being row A in any sort of circle, dress circle situation is wonderful. You most of the time get a really, really good unobstructed view and that's exactly what this was. A bit far away though, I will say that. I think about 10-15 minutes before the show starts, that's when all of the performers start coming out onto the stage and it's really, really fun to watch them because it makes makes it so immersive, like you are in the Moulin Rouge. It's fantastic. Kind of gave me Peter Pan Goes Wrong vibes, but in, in a totally different way. So I'm in, I'm in my seat, I'm in the Grand Circle A27. I hope I got the right number because I didn't actually check my ticket again before coming in, so fingers crossed. Uh, Dom's on, I knew that obviously, I can't wait to see him, I'm so proud of him. Obviously you saw the little note that I uh, wrote to him on my piece of artwork, so He's, he's gonna be amazing. I am so proud of this man. And he's like actually famous now. Like Moulin Rouge is so much more popular than say the common. Like he's famous. I'm just proud of my boy. I was trying to find a place to do this where people wouldn't judge me. Uh, I tried to do it out there and someone looked at me weirdly so I'm not gonna do it there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna film myself here instead because it's, it's much safer. Lighting is not great though, it's very bright. Uh, I blend right in. I'm gonna be very honest, I started crying for Dom because I am so proud of this man. Like, he's everything. He's made it. He's, he's absolutely made it. Um, the story... Danielle told me the plot of this and it's a little bit cringe. Mainly in the sense that it feels like a fan fiction that a 14 year old wrote in like early 2010s where like, I don't know, Edward's Christian. Bella is the teen and um, whatever his name, Jacob's the Duke. I never watched Twilight, it just feels like a, a fan fiction. Um, but you know, Dom is amazing and also as someone like me who is a very set and lighting design enthusiast, I want to know everything. <laughs> the, the set is probably the most impressive part to me besides Dom, obviously intonations are really, really good. Those two are amazing, but the story isn't my thing. I'm gonna say that, but you know. But yes, again, I love Dom and I felt like a proud father and I'm gonna feel like a proud father again. Guys, I'm an emotional wreck. I just saw Dom back there. I am so proud of him. Genuinely, he's he's absolutely amazing. I don't, there isn't a word to describe that man. I'm so emotional right now, I'm literally shaking. I'm gonna check out more when it's 20 past five. Why the hell not? Um, that was amazing. I love him so much. So proud of Dom. And Dom, if you're watching this, because I might tag you in the video, mwah, love ya. You know, I'd say that was actually pretty worth it. <laughs> I saw Patrick, George, Ben, Jack. Jack reckons this is the biggest show in the West End. Sorry, Dom's famous now. He's left all of you in the dust. 
I'm joking, I'm joking obviously, but yeah, that was worth it. I think I'm gonna get some dinner and then go to my train, which hopefully isn't cancelled this week. <laughs> well, hello. I'm home safe. My train wasn't delayed, thank God. But I'm wearing my Muppet Christmas Carol shirt, which gives you an indication of what the next video is going to be. I have already seen the concert and I can confirm that I will be doing it again next year when it comes. Um, but that's not what I'm here to talk about today. I'm here to talk about Moulin Rouge, the musical at the Piccadilly Theatre in London. Now the reason I got the motivation to actually film this today was because my friend Danielle was at the matinee and oh my god she embarrassed the hell out of me. In the way that... I didn't mention this because I didn't want y'all to think I was stupid, but I don't have a program. I bought a program. I got this picture. This, this, you know, the picture that you have to get every time you go to a theatre. And I left my program under the seat. It's gone. <laughs> I didn't realise until I was already like way, way, way away. Like, that's in the trash. Um, so Danielle was very kind. She got me another program and she got it signed. However, she was kind of exposing why she was getting two programs signed and, you know, um, Matt Rickson, who plays Harold, kind of roasted me on that one because he said that he's forgetful, but he has an excuse because he's old. So. Good thing he doesn't really know who I am. Okay, moving on. <laughs> now, as I've said, this show really isn't for me in the story sense. It is a very fun show, I will say. And the songs are interesting for me because it's a jukebox, you know, and most of the songs in Moulin Rouge are like really famous songs. And sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. There's something really, really unserious about Satine breaking into firework. I, I don't know why, it, it just felt so out of place and I think that's because I know the song, like I know it's by Katy Perry and I listened and watched the music video when I was like 12. So it just felt really out of place. But things like Shut Up and Raise Your Glass, Welcome to the Moulin Rouge, Your Song, like all of those had their places. It was just that one song that just like, oh, it didn't fit and I, I didn't like it. Um, obviously Tanisha has a beautiful voice, but obviously that's not a fault of her or any of the performers. It's just a sort of, it's a writing decision and song decision that doesn't really sit that well with me, I will say. But it is very fun and colourful and it is nice to look at all the costumes and the lighting. And as I said, everyone is insanely talented in this thing, so just getting to see a bunch of talented performers is really worth the money, I think. I don't think this will be one of the shows that I keep going back to, but I do want to go again. And speaking of, obviously, Danielle was at the performance today, we've been talking about getting can-can seats to really soak in the Dom Simpson hotness. Um, because when you book can-can seats, you can only book two, you can't book one and then leave an empty one. Um, so we've decided that we're going to book can-can seats for some time next year. Don't know when, but it's it's gonna happen. I'm going to go back to this show. So honestly, the fact that I didn't really like it, but do really, really want to go back, says a lot more about the performers than it does about the show. I absolutely loved everyone who was in it. They were so, so good. So let's kick things off with Dom Simpson as Christian. I can't even begin to describe how talented this man is. He was incredible. His singing voice is just amazing. And it's so, it's, it's such a different role to Kevin Price from the Book of Mormon, you know? Um, Kevin Price was a silly, cheesy American Mormon missionary from Utah, I suppose, um, who went on a mission and lost his religion. Christian is like an innocent lover boy. He's a songwriter. He's also a songwriter. I was trying to think of Christian character things and nothing's really coming to me. He's kind of just the generic love interest. Again, it's it's the writing. It's it's just the writing. Um, but he was so, so good. I will say the way Dom plays Christian is very, very sweet. He's like Golden Retriever boyfriend. But he was this sort of clumsy, nervous, like very sweet boy who was just absolutely in love with Satine the moment he saw her. And, you know, he's even willing to go into a little bit of a secret relationship with her. 
that part is a little bit fan fictiony, but I, I again I, I digress. But it's so interesting to hear him sing all of these like love ballads and like really gritty belty songs. Like I believe was in the Book of Mormon, but that was sort of just a cheesy missionary just trying to find his way. Um, like it's such a contrast and he's so so good and it shows me that he's obviously very very versatile as a performer. I did really love his portrayal um, and you could really tell that he dealt with the emotional scenes and the funny scenes and everything just like so differently but also so coherent to one character. Now there's one thing I will say and a lot of people have been saying this and I don't want to be like mean and it is constructive it's it's definitely constructive but his accent kind of jumps all over the place um he's supposed to be american from ohio uh, he says that in the show and i don't know much about like american regional accents and like accents from different states and that but it felt like it, it was an american accent the whole way through but it felt like it was jumping from different regional ones and his pronunciations of some words were a little bit funny and sometimes the accent didn't really carry that well into the song but yeah overall his performance was absolutely phenomenal and i can't wait to go back i didn't see him when he was like very new to the role so i feel like by the time i saw him he was already like settled in like that was his home you know and I really think he has, like he's really settled into this new role and this new home that he's got in the Piccadilly. So I'm really proud of him and I, I really hope I can see him again in this role because he is incredible. He's done something incredible. There's your Book of Mormon reference for the day, ladies and gentlemen, that's been Elliot Sweet. I'm just kidding, there's, there's definitely more to talk about. So next up we got Tanisha Spring as Satine. She was really a sparkling diamond, that's all I'm gonna say. She was incredible. She had such a good voice. It was such a lovely, beautiful, belty voice. It was so controlled. She had such good, really, really good vocals. I can't stress that enough. Um, but she was also really good at her, like, acting parts of it. Like, I think she played it as, you know, a very innocent girl who obviously fell in love uh, with Christian. Obviously, originally, she thought he was the Duke, but... You know, even when she found out that Christian was poor and didn't really have anything that he could offer her, she was still so in love with him and that's just so important. But I will say, obviously, with her and Christian's characters and Satine's specific background, with like the Moulin Rouge and everything that she's done in her life, she's a bit more ambitious when it comes to love, which sort of balances those two characters out perfectly and they worked perfectly on stage together. Uh, when she was dealing with the sadder scenes, again, as I said, not her fault, but Firework was just a little bit out of place there. Um, but other than that, like, she played everything in such a consistent character. Um, her contrast between, like, the sadder scenes and the more emotional bits and then being really, really happy with Christian, like, it was just so consistent and good. And the bit where she, like, obviously it's the Duke's doing, but the bit where she turns Christian away there was a coldness, like you could feel it and you could hear a pin drop in that room, like she was just that phenomenal at playing different aspects of a character, which is so important, like when you're acting as a character, you have to explore those different emotions and how they deal with them and she did that perfectly. She is also just very, very beautiful, like she's, she's so pretty and she suited all the costumes and the costumes were so, so, so good. All of her costumes. And one thing I will say about Satine's costumes is they did do a little bit of foreshadowing. So if you don't know the sort of basic plot, they're trying to put on a play in the Moulin Rouge. And the play is also kind of the plot of the musical that you're watching. You know, there's a performer who is dying, who is Satine. And I think, yeah, it is the Duke. The Duke kind of complains about how she's always wearing black clothing. And I noticed that mainly throughout Act 2, Satine is wearing black clothing. And that's sort of the indication that she is going to die. Um, and, you know, that's also the symbolism that they were going for in their own play. Um, which I just thought was really clever. And when she's being shown the high life by the Duke, she's wearing like very bright sort of pastel-y colours. That costume was amazing, by the way, just gonna say. But it does also show the fact that like, he doesn't know that she's sick and not gonna last that long. Like, 
when she's alone with him, she's not wearing black clothing. And then when she goes back into the Moulin Rouge, she is. Because characters like Harold and Nini know Satine's condition. And it's just a little bit of costume symbolism for a backstage costume theatre techie geek. So I just wanted to put it out there. Now I did want to speak of the Duke a little bit, but like... Not that much. There isn't really much to say about him, and that's not in, like, a negative way towards the performer at all. Um, again, I think it's just the writing, but he was just kind of... Disney villain. Like, that was just kind of his whole character. Like, he was just evil. There wasn't any sort of depth as to why he was like that. He was just rich, snobby and a bit of a cunt. So Ben Richards is the guy that plays the Duke, and being given this sort of Disney villain character, he did play it really, really well, and he did have a really strong singing voice and stage presence. I just don't think there was that much depth to his character. Now, there is kind of one side character I want to touch on, and that was Toulouse, played by Ian Carlyle. I don't know what it was. Like, he was so silly and funny, especially when first meeting Christian. Um, and, you know, he's the one that's trying to write this play and, like, put it on. And then he finds this raw talent in Christian. And when he figures that Christian has fallen in love with Satine, you know, he remembers his own relationship with Satine. And he played it so well, being the sort of, like, you know, it didn't work out with me, so, like, don't give it up. Like, you go and you love her. Um, so he had kind of a sad story, and I think it was after Come What May, like, um, Christian and Satine's little duet, um, he had his own part of that song to sing, um, because he never got to sing it with Satine. So I just think his character was really sweet, funny, sad. He was just a perfect balance of everything, so shout out to Ian. Finally, I do want to touch on Matt Rixton, who plays Harold. Now, Harold is, like, the owner of the Moulin Rouge, obviously before the Duke buys it off of him. But, you know, he's very much a father figure to Satine. He is very silly and goofy, especially at the start. He's got this sort of ringmaster vibe. He interacts with the audience the most, but I think that makes a lot of sense because, you know, they set the theatre like you're in the Moulin Rouge. So if he's like the owner slash host, there you go. Um, but he was just really funny. Um, he handled the funny parts a lot better than the sort of sad emotional bits. Um, because I feel like he was obviously still being very, very harsh to Satine, like, sort of pushing her because she had to marry the Duke, otherwise they would be sent out onto the streets again. Um, I also kind of found his relationship with Satine a little bit weird. Like, there were some things he did that I just don't know if it's supposed to be, like, a father-daughter relationship or something a lot darker. Um, I mean, this is the Moulin Rouge we're talking about. It, it could be. Um, but, you know, he was very funny and silly, and I did love him. And for that, I say, well done. But he is kind of played to be this very silly, goofy guy. So I feel like when there are the darker moments with him, it's sort of a bit of a shock, you know? Like, someone that silly and happy can be that, like, horrible. Um, but yeah, you know, hats off to him, because he was great, and obviously one of the most memorable parts of the show, especially in sort of the supporting cast. Obviously Dom and Tanisha were the, the most memorable, but you know, shout out to Matt. Anyway, I think that's gonna do it for my little review on Moulin Rouge. I really did enjoy this show, even if the story isn't for me. The general show and like the look of it and the sound of it is enough to bring me back for a second round. But the next time you see me, I'll be seeing the Muppet Christmas Carol in concert at the Eventum Apollo in London Hammersmith. So I'll see you then. Bye-bye. <laughs>